Hello, following with lesson four dedicated to the study of the electric potential, we are going to see how to calculate this potential in the case of continuous systems of charge. For this, we have to handle several concepts. First, what is a differential charge element? And second, third and fourth, how are longitudinal, surface and volumetric distributions? I am not going to expand on this part because you have already analyzed the same applied to electric fields in lesson 3. What we have to keep in mind is that we know how to calculate the potential created by a set of point charges. It is a question of taking for each one of them what is the potential that it creates in a determined point and to add it for the set to obtain the total potential. This is what we are going to apply to the case of continuous distributions as dividing the continuous distribution in a set of infinite point charges, each of them with an infinitesimal charge. I'll have to get applying the point charge point formula, this one right here. What is the potential created by that equivalent point charge? And then, if there is an infinitesimal value, I will add them all. That is, I will integrate. To do this, we have to keep in mind some definitions that you already know. First, that in the case of a longitudinal distribution, the relevant thing is that for any infinitesimal segment, remember that infinitesimal means very small in size so small that multiplied by the largest microscope in the world, it will still not be seen. Here we paint it with a finite size, simply for visualization purposes. That infinitesimal piece will also have an infinitesimal charge, and the quotient between one and the other is what we call longitudinal charge density. Coulombs per meter is also international. In the case of a surface distribution, it is all equivalent, only that the charge is distributed on a surface. What we do is take a piece of surface with an infinitesimal differential area of that. And the quotient between the tiny charge and the tiny area is what we call the surface charge density, which is measured in coulombs per square meter, again in the international system. Equivalently, here what we would have is small volumes with infinitesimal charge. The quotient between small charge and small volume is what we call volumetric charge density, coulombs per cubic meter. Let's see how these calculations are made in the case with more detail of the longitudinal distribution, because we will see that the surface and volumetric are absolutely analogous. We have a longitudinal, longitudinal, for example, along this line, which could be a small conductor, a cable, and we have a length differential, which for practical purposes, because it is very small, is like a point charge. For a single point charge, this is the formula. The difference is that if we have this small piece, what we have is an infinitesimal charge then this charge is a differential of Q. And we have a small potential, this V will be a differential of V. Given the expression of what the linear density is, what we have to do is to calculate that small point charge. Equivalently speaking, at this point, what potential it creates. And it is simply as I say, where it says Q, we put the small differential charge that has that green point, and what potential it creates. And what I have to do is to add them all together, that is, integrate along the length of that expression. What happens? That, that differential of Q, as we can see here, that differential of Q is lambda multiplied by differential of L. And that's what I replace. So this is the final expression of how the potential of a linear distribution is calculated. You can see that it is the integral of the one of the infinitesimal points that we divide it into. And for each point, we use the value of lambda. As an example of application, the same that we use to calculate the electric field, let's consider a circular loop, i.e., therefore, a small wire formed of circumference in which we have a charge uniformly distributed coulombs per meter that we have already called lambda. Well then, let's consider that infinitesimal piece, a very small arc segment, the distance, that is, this is the vector r that we use in electrostatics to calculate the field or the potential created by a point charge at the point that interests me. Obviously, the modulus of that vector is the one that I have to put here. And the modulus of that vector, as we can see from the drawing, is precisely the radius of the circumference. Well, since that radius is constant, we can take it out of the integral. And I am left with the integral of the differential of L, which is nothing more nor less than the sum of all the small segments. That is to say, the total length. It is a simple integral in this case. That is why we have put it as an example. It is a relatively very simple case. Since the length of the circumference is 2 pi times this constant radius, then r with r goes away. And I am left with this expression, 2 pi times the electric constant times the linear charge density. We can see that the radius ends up not appearing. Well, keep in mind also, by the way, 
that all this refers to a positive charge. If it were negative, then the field would be reversed and we would have to take it into account. Note also a small detail. If you remember when this same exercise was done in lesson 3 to obtain the electric field, it turned out that the electric field at the center point was zero. Notice that yes, the field is zero, but potential is not. Accelerating a little, because everything is exactly the same. In the case of a surface charge distribution, the only difference is first, that this quotient is what we take of surface density, and second, that the charge differential is not lambda by differential of L, but sigma by differential of S. This is the only change, so I do not go into more detail, because you can change one multiplication by the other. The same thing will happen in the case of a volumetric distribution. Everything is exactly the same, only that when I have to use the differential of Q, it will be R for differential of V, that is, volumetric density for small volume. With these changes, I repeat, that instead of being lambda for differential of L or sigma for differential of S, it is R for differential of V. And of course, it does not integrate a line or a surface, but a volume. The expressions, as you can see, are equivalent. So we can summarize it all in this way. First, for an infinitesimal point charge, this is the expression of its potential. Then, what I will have to do is to integrate this expression by replacing the differential of Q by the corresponding expression, which will be lambda by differential of L, sigma by differential of S, or R by differential of V, depending on whether the distribution is linear, surface, or volumetric. Thank you very much for your attention.